The first thing we need to begin to look at is the book of First Peter, chapter four. First Peter, chapter four. Um, in fact, I tell you before we look at Peter, let, let's look at Job a moment. All right, let's establish just a few things before we get to Peter. Go to Job, uh, uh, sometimes called Job, uh, chapter fourteen, and um, listen to what he says in verse one. Chapter fourteen, verse one. He simply says this, a man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So he said anyone that comes through the doorways of life, which is a woman, you are promised trouble. You are promised difficulties of life. Right? And now let, let, let's go a little further. Let's come to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Now Paul is going to pick it up and make it even a little more specific. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. And Paul says to Timothy, his spiritual son, he says, And ye those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So Paul said, I don't want you to get the idea that just because you're living for God, you're not going to have any problems. Uh, that is one of the dangers. We must be very careful that we do not market Christianity in the manner of once you come to God, all of your problems are over. Your promised problems. Your promised difficulties. Right down to very simplistic things. Science, one of the things that science ran into, one of the challenges that science ran into, is when they sent men into space, there was no gravity, which means there was nothing to resist, which means there was no pressure. They found out that when the astronauts were staying in this non-pressure environment for long periods of time, that they were actually beginning to deteriorate their muscles because there was no resistance. See, for you even to walk, you must push against gravity, which in essence keeps you moving. If you decide that you're going to save your arm and you tie it to your side and don't use it, you say, by not using it, I'm going to preserve it. By not putting any resistance on it, I'm going to preserve it. You would actually discover in a few months you wouldn't be able to use it at all. You must have pressure in order to have performance. Now, as much as we may not like pressure, pressure is necessary. It is needful. Pressure and stress are needful elements of life. The problem is not having pressure and stress. The problem is how you handle it. Uh, simplistically put, uh, they teach us that lifting weights, uh, how much you lift is not the problem. It's how you lift. If you lift it with your back, you're going to hurt yourself. If you lift it with your knees, you will actually build your muscle. So then, same thing with God. Lifting things with your back symbolizes trying to lift things in your own strength. You're going to hurt yourself. But if you lift it with your knees, which symbolizes prayer, you're going to build yourself. You advance in God, you grow through adversity. God's university is the school of adversity. You must graduate. Touch your neighbor say, you need to graduate. You need to graduate. Yeah. Yeah. And so God is moving to teach us how to handle things. See, our prayer many times is God move it. God's prayer is, I've never heard so much from you since it came. He said, my goodness. You see, a prayerless saint is like a pit bull with AIDS. You are deadly. You are contagious. Why? Because you are not governed. You are not regulated. You must understand that what happens in the natural is a parallel of the spiritual. What AIDS is, is a breakdown of the immunity system. It is the decomposing of the immunity system that has allowed your body to hold back against things it normally can fend off. 
like a common cold walks in, now kills you. Whereby your body would have no problem deterring the cold. Well, you see, this first happened in the supernatural realm. For there was an attack against the blood of Jesus Christ, where even in the Christian world, blood songs were being taken out of hymn books. And people were beginning to decompose the defense system of God against the things that would ward us off from sin. So now what God is doing is raising back up a people and strengthening them, causing them to understand who they are and letting them walk in the fullness of their authority. Somebody thank God for that. Come to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4 now. Now we can look at Peter because, uh, and if you haven't swallowed already, you need to. Um, 1 Peter chapter 4 because this is something that when we read, you must get God's mentality on things. May I tell you this first? Some years ago, I just found myself in trial after trial after trial after trial. There's sometimes you run what we call the spiritual obstacle course. Uh, you've got to run through the tires, swing over the pond, climb up the wall, you know, jump over the hurdles. In other words, you hit one trial after the next trial after the next trial without any kind of break. And you know, the problem with an obstacle course is not that these, any, these one things are difficult by themselves. It's the combination that causes you to trip up and fall. And so it is trial after trial after trial after trial after trial. The purpose is to cause you to trip up in your faith and fall. And the Lord spoke back to me and he said, see... You have to think like me to walk with me. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Duh. Not agree, agreed. Duh. Agreed means that you agree with me first, walk with me afterwards. Agree would imply we agree as we walk. God said, I don't take one step with you till you agree with me first. Now you're empowered to walk. So God said, now I need you to get my understanding he said, you're seeing this as punishment because you're having difficulty. He said, that's not how I see it. He said, let me tell you how I see it. It is illegal, both naturally and spiritually, to become intimate with a child. He said, you're still a little child, and I'm anxious to get intimate with you, and the way to mature you is by fire. So I have allowed an increase of fire in your life to mature you so that I may become intimate with you. So it's not a punishment, it's a privilege. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've got to be careful now that you don't look like you've been baptized in lemon juice. Somebody just smiles. Because what God wants you to recognize is walking with God does not mean you're not going to have difficulty. You're going to have trials, you're going to have difficulty of life. But God must teach you how to handle things. Now, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. I need you to hear this in the Amplified Version of the Bible because it's going to really help do what it says, amplify it, magnify, break some things apart, and give us understanding. It says, so, since Christ suffered in the flesh for us, for you, arm yourselves with the same thought and purpose, patiently to suffer rather than fail to please God. For whoever has suffered in the flesh, having the mind of Christ, is done with intentional sin, has stopped pleasing himself and the world, and pleases God. The reason why God allows you to go through difficulty is to teach you to stop pleasing yourself. All right, you do the same thing as parents, as, as guardians. You tell a child, don't do something, because you don't want them hurt. But sometimes, they, sometimes you know they're going to do it. They go ahead and do it. So sometimes you just let them touch that little hot thing lightly. One little burn teaches them never touch that again. They learn obedience sometimes through the things which they suffer. It's not what you want them to do, but as sometimes you know, there's no other way to deter them from doing it. And so it is with God. God sometimes has to allow some stuff to happen to you to teach you that you ain't as smart as you think you are. Now, I know you think you all that and a bag of chips. I know you think you the main meal and the snack on the side. So God just got to teach you, you ain't all that. Sometimes how he teaches you that is by simply letting you go through something where you're clueless. 
you know, I really thought I could have handled this, but now that it's happened, I- I'm struggling. I- I- I'm, I'm, I'm drowning. And God's going, are you ready to ask for help now? Because your power is in your dependency. Have you ever done that with a little child? Children, sometimes you go, they're trying to tie their shoes. Well, let me show you, honey. I want to do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> little fingers are struggling. They're trying to make the bow. They can't make it. They're getting frustrated. All you can do is ask for help. Shake their little head, pout their face, and keep trying to do it. And you see them struggling and struggling all because they won't ask for help. So God sometimes got to bring you to a point where you learn how to ask for help. Some of you are too proud to ask for help. I don't need nobody. Listen, every Superman got kryptonite, baby. Every Superman got kryptonite. You hear me? You got some kryptonite somewhere. So God's got to make you realize that the only one that is invincible is God. One of the problems that happens to young people, particularly particularly young men, is this feeling of invincibility. Strong, robust, nothing taking me down. I can, you know, do what I want to do. And so God's got to let some stuff happen. Sometimes some simple things. You're out playing basketball, you sprain your leg. All of a sudden you can't walk. Kind of clicks. I'm not as strong as I thought I was. God lets some stuff. He has to allow. Better say allow. All right, so he has to allow some things to happen in order to bring you to a area of understanding with him. Now, listen to verse 2. So that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living by his human appetites and desires, but he lives for what God wills. In other words, God sometimes has to, watch this, you, you do this sometimes. You know, children will want to eat candy all day long if you let them. And, and they think, in fact, that you're mean for not giving it to them. God said, now, now you understand what happens between you and I. Let me put it to you another way. Babies are attracted to light. Babies are very fascinated with light when they're first born. It is one of the things that catches automatically a baby's eye is light. And so anything that reflects light, they tend to want it. So they'll see an object and they'll reach for it because it's reflecting light. You won't give them the object. Why? They don't see the cutting edge of the knife. All they see is the light coming off the metal. And see, that's what happens to a lot of you. All you can see is if I would get this thing, how glorious and beautiful, how much light it would bring to my life. And you don't see the cutting edge of the damage it could do to you. So God withholds it from you. And you end up screaming and crying like a baby. Some of you end up throwing spiritual temper tantrums. You know what a baby does by throwing a temper tantrum? I'm going to hold my breath. Well, this is what some people do. The Bible says, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So then you end up holding your praise. Because I'm not getting what I want, and I don't understand why I'm not getting it. But this is where God says, I need you to trust me that if I didn't give it to you, it's because it wasn't what was best for you. I know you may not understand. I know you may have wanted to work another way. I know you may have wished something would have transpired. I will never forget we had a situation where a loved one, someone died, And we began to seek the face of the Lord because just something just didn't seem right. God, why did you let this person go? And the Lord began to open up understanding. And it was really after they died, other things began to materialize and people began to step forward and said they were beginning to wander off the pathway. Certain things were starting to happen. And the Lord had already spoken. We I took them home because if I let them stay, they would not have stayed living for me. So I took them home while they were still living for me so they could live with me forever rather than let them stay in the earth and wander away from me and not be with me forever. You may not understand it, but he's wiser than you. Somebody lift your hands again to him right now. Somebody open up your mouth to him because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open our understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open our understanding. Open our understanding. Open. Open our understanding. 